All right, today we are here in the passenger seat base of a 2019 Unity. Uh, we've already removed the seat. It's four 11 millimeter um, bolts in the corners. Uh, there's a cover that goes over this. We've already removed that, but we're installing um, an Orion 18 amp DC to DC charger for the chassis battery charger. So uh, they already have the Kise DC to DC charger installed for the uh, alternator charging when the engine is running to the house battery, but this is going to charge the chassis battery uh, anytime the house battery is being um, charged. So you know, this basically we're using a same kind of a thing, a DC to DC charger, but in the other direction. This one is going from chassis to house, and this one will be going from house to chassis. So I'm going to probably put it right back here in this corner um, against the wall, and I'll be installing... Uh, two circuit breakers, which will go probably go in this area. Um, so I'll get started uh, putting all the wiring together, and we'll come back. All right, so I um, have already put a um, ring connector, because I'm going to put it right here on the house battery wire, connected to the circuit breaker that supplies the Kise DC to DC charger. And the circuit breakers, it has this plastic cap on it, so you have to thread your wire through it. But I don't like putting um, a stranded wire into these kind of barrel terminals because the, you have a risk that the little strands of wire, you know, can fray out and not actually get in the terminal. So I am going to put a ferrule. connectors on um, all my connections and for my connections for the uh, Victron so you can see that then that makes a nice little um, solid piece then you put it inside your screw terminal and then you tighten it up nice and tight and then you pull this up and screw your cap on there now you have a nice sealed connection for a circuit breaker and like I said I'm going to undo that nut and put it there and I'll be mounting this in this area but I'm not going to do that uh, until I make my connection so I'll come back uh, and keep making my connections and show you what I've done Alright, I've got my circuit breaker connection on the house battery, so I can go ahead and tighten this up. Now, I'm working on this system hot, uh, just because I'm being careful, but you definitely want to disconnect the house battery and the chassis battery, so you don't have to worry that your wrench could touch anything metal. Because if you touch anything metal while you're on a wire that has a voltage, you're gonna short out and you're gonna have more problems to fix than you started with. So always disconnect all the power to anything that you're working on um, or you will be sorry. All right, I went and hooked up my other circuit breaker. Normally I use two 30 amp circuit breakers, but this was a, a surprise trip um, to see me to, re, re, uh, to put this in. And I had a 30 amp and a 20 amp, so I'm putting the 30 amp on the house side because it's a longer wire run. 
and there could be a little bit more voltage drop. And then I'm putting the 20 amp on the chassis battery um, because it's it's closer. But normally I would use two 30s, but I, I think this will work out just fine. So my next thing, so I've got it hooked up to the chassis battery. You can see this big fat cable right here is coming from the chassis battery and it's connected to this ignition control relay, which the output of that goes to the key say. So I'm putting it on the constant chassis battery voltage side to power the DC to DC charger for the chassis battery charging. So I, I have another cable, which I put uh, ferrules on each end, so I'm going to be basically going from each one of these into the positive for um, this DC to, um, DC to DC charger 18 amp Orion TR. So I will get on with doing that and come back and show you. Two. All right, so I've got the positive wires from each of the circuit breakers hooked up to the plus for the uh, Orion and um, I haven't showed it but they're just barrel terminals that you stick your um, uh, you know I put ferrules on the end so you don't have any wires sticking out they just go cleanly into each location and then you use the screws on top to tighten it so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, I'm going to make a jumper because this is called an isolated DC to DC charger. And what that means, isolated means you have a separate terminal for each of the negatives. So you could have it wired to each negative of the battery. But here in, a, in, in our sprinters, uh, in our leisure travel vans, all the negatives are to the chassis ground. So you can actually just make a little jumper going between the negatives and then put a an additional negative. So two on one and jumper that. So you're just using one negative wire for your ground. So I'm going to be uh, using my ferrule connections, my ferrule uh, connectors and put two, two together and one. Uh, and then I'm going to be attaching it to this ground terminal. Um, so I will continue on with that and come back and show you. Okay, so I'm using a six gauge ferrule for two 10 gauge wires. And the tricky part is getting all the little strands in. Sometimes if you twist it, oops. <laughs> All right, so anyway, so you get the gist. I'm going to put this one on these two, so I'll do that and come back. All right, so I made my little jumper wire. I have it connected here to the case ground, which is grounded to the chassis. Um, so now I just need to stick it in my Victron terminals, like so and tighten it down. Okay, so now we have, uh, basically we have the, the uh, Victron chassis battery charger uh, installed completely wired, ready to work. So next thing I will do is mount it to the wall. I'm probably just going to use a couple of self-tapping screws. Make sure all these are tight. And they are. Um, uh, so I'm going to use some self-tapping screws and then we'll be able to close these breakers and it will come to life and we'll do the settings in the phone. And uh, Jane and John can be on their way. All right, I have got um, I've got my circuit breakers hooked up. I've got the DC to DC charger installed against the wall. I used two 
uh, self-tapping, self-drilling screws. I'll knock the, the heads off the back so they don't stick out when we put the vinyl cover back on. Um, so basically we're done. Oh, I've got to tighten down this um, tighten down this this ground. So basically so now we're, we're completely installed. I can close the circuit breakers back to turn on the to power the key say again. I can close these circuit breakers to start up the um, 18 amp Orion TR smart DC to DC charger and then we will uh, call it up on the phone and do all the updates so I will uh, come back and show you when we start it up all right so I am going to close the breakers the key say just came to life and then I'm going to close the the uh, Victron, but nothing happened. Hmm. Okay. Back to the drawing board. I think I think the problem is this ground. I don't think this ground is strong enough. Okay, um, I found out that the this ground is not very strong, and I think it's because uh, these are galvanized steel bars. Um, so anyway, so I moved the ground for the uh, Orion over to this ground bolt, which is uh, definitely a chassis chassis good chest solid chassis ground so uh, now we are ready to flip these on and when we flip them on this light will start blinking blue there it is can you see it it's very faint I don't know if you can see it. Okay. All right. So, uh, now, on your phone, uh, um, Jane's already down, she already has the Victron Connect app. And if you want to hand it to me. She already has the Victron Connect app. I don't know if you can see this very good in the sun. Um, so uh, she, you know, she already had a solo controller and things like that. So now her Orion TR has shown up. So now we just hit that. And uh, it wants the, the pin number. Now the Victron has changed. It used to be they had a 60 pin code that was a standard and then you could change your own pin. But now they're actually providing a pin with every purchase. So uh, I um, uh, recommend that you write down this PUK number and that pin number on your documentation that came with your Victron uh, device and keep this someplace because if you get a new phone and you have to reload the Victron Connect app, you need that PUK number and that PIN number. Um, for sure you need the PIN number uh, to reload and, and get access to your devices. And if for some reason the PIN doesn't work, then you can reset using the PUK number. And I have a video on that that people can use if they need to reset their pin code but anyway so it's very important that you that you keep that so I'm going to enter in that pin 837739 to pair and here it is so now we need to do the settings uh, and they want you to do an update, so we'll go through the update, and uh, I'll go through all that and get it working, 
and then um, we'll come back because sometimes these updates take a few minutes. Okay, so after you go through, it asks if you want to, um, you, you hit the little cog wheel up at the top corner. It's the settings wheel. And the first question it asks you is, do you want to enable instant readout? You say yes, enable now. Um, then you want to change this to be, you want the function to be a battery charger. Say okay. And then... Uh, um, let's see, one of the other things we can do, oh, go to product info, I like to do this first, and change the name, because, um, uh, when you're at a campground, everybody is going to have, um, you know, Victron products, so I'm going to call this Jane... Chassis Charger. I think I can get a B in there. Nope, that's it. <laughs> Jane Chassis Charger. That'll be good enough. Okay. So, then that's all you need is change, uh, is change the name and then go back. And then now we need to go through the settings. So, I need to call those up on my phone. Okay, so after you go through, it asks if you want to, um, you, you hit the little cog wheel up at the top corner. It's the settings wheel. And the first question it asks you is, do you want to enable instant readout? You say yes, enable now. Um, then you want to change this to be, you want the function to be a battery charger. Say okay. And then... Uh, um, let's see, one of the other things we can do, oh, go to product info, I like to do this first, and change the name, because, um, uh, when you're at a campground, everybody is going to have, um, you know, Victron products, so I'm going to call this Jane... Chassis Charger. I think I can get a B in there. Nope, that's it. <laughs> Jane Chassis Charger. That'll be good enough. Okay. So, then that's all you need is change, uh, is change the name and then go back. And then now we need to go through the settings. So, I need to call those up on my phone. Okay, so you want to make sure you go up here to the uh, to this little arrow and and change it from factory default to user defined. You want your charger enabled. Now your chassis battery is an AGM battery, so you need to set it. Uh, AGM batteries have a standard absorption voltage and float voltage. So the absorption voltage you want to change to 14.4 volts. Which I already have. And then hit OK. And the float voltage should be 13.4 volts. So change that and hit OK. Then your bulk time limit. We don't need, you know, the chassis battery is basically already fully charged. This is basically just trickle charging it. So you only want to have the bulk voltage run for one hour. Uh, you want the re-bulk offset to be 0.5 volts. And what that means is when the battery voltage drops a half a volt, then the uh, it'll recharge. Uh, so that's for like parasitic loads, you know, parasitic draws that are on that battery. So as you know, as anything draws it down a little bit, then the charging will begin again. And then we want the absorption to be fixed 
for one hour. Okay, then we want to go back to settings and uh, engine detection we want disabled. And then input, input voltage lockout, we want that to be thirteen point three, and then we want the restart value to be thirteen point six done okay now what that means is uh since the um the lithium battery uh jane has a has a lithionics lithium battery and basically it's sitting at such a high voltage that um that uh, the Orion basically thinks it's being charged all the time, 24/7. Whether you know the solar controller is really sending, is really charging it, or whether the inverter battery charger is really charging it, you know, it, it can't discern because a lithium battery voltage is so much higher just sitting. So we changed this. We use this lockout setting, so the chassis battery stops being charged when the lithionics lithium house battery is just at a sitting resting voltage of 3.3 volts and then it begins it will start to recharge uh, it'll basically turn on when it sees that the voltage for the lithium bat the lithionics lithium battery has increased to 13.6 signifying that it is truly being charged so this is a way to you know keep the Orion from like running 24 7 and actually pulling down the lithionics uh, lithium house battery so so we use this uh, input lockout voltage to make sure that um, that you know it's it's only going to charge the chassis battery when the lithionics house battery is actually being charged by the solar or by the inverter battery charger Okay, so that concludes it. Uh, oh, let me show you. So, here's what it looks like. Uh, the screen looks like normally. It tells you what the input voltage is, which the input voltage is your house battery, and then the output voltage is the chassis battery. Um, the solar is charging the house battery. So that, so that's correct. It should be at 14.4. Okay. So, um, so we're done and, uh, everything seems to be working fine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, button this back up. Um, where's that, the plate, the cover thing. So we're going to put our cover on back on top. And uh, put the vinyl back on and put the seat back on and we'll be done. So we'll, we'll uh, come back and show you what that looks like. Seat back. Okay. All right. We got the seat back on. Can you swing around? All right. I just want to show people. Now all you have to do is feel, to get to the circuit breakers, you just feel for these little tabs and push it down and use your awning cover to pull it out. Okay, then you can stretch, you can stretch this cover up and get in there to manipulate the circuit breakers. Whether you want to disconnect the uh, chassis Orion Victron Orion TR chassis battery charger by its two circuit breakers, or disconnect the key say with its two circuit breakers, very easy. 
and then you just put the bottom part of the panel in first and snap it back into place there you go all right this concludes the installation of the Victron 18 amp uh, chassis battery charger.